Hey friends, Ash here with Incense. Today I'm coming at you guys with 10 fragrances that every man should smell at least once. And this is going to be kind of an ongoing series that I add to as time goes. Since this is the first part, this is going to be the extreme basics. And honestly, the first few videos in this series are probably going to be more basic fragrances that well, maybe not necessarily basic fragrance wise, but things that are really popular, the obvious fragrances, I should say. So smelling these fragrances here will give you a nice base to kind of build off of. It will give you some reference points. And when these fragrances are talked about or fragrances in these styles, you'll know what other people are talking about. So let's go ahead and jump into this. 10 fragrances every man should smell at least once. The basics. Goes without saying, pretty much all of these are going to be designer fragrances because this particular video is geared more toward people that are trying to learn, people that are starting out, people that maybe haven't smelled hundreds and hundreds of fragrances. But feel free to watch this even if you've smelled hundreds and hundreds of fragrances because maybe you won't agree with me. But if that's the case, go easy on me. First up, the only niche fragrance in this particular list and I'm pretty sure you know what it is. Creed Aventus. Yeah, Creed Aventus gets talked about a lot. Honestly, a little bit too much. I actually just made a video the other day about Aventus clones and how I'm kind of tired of them. But Creed Aventus, if you've never smelled it, you probably should. This is the niche king, or at least lots of people will reference it as that, as the king of fragrances. And yeah, it smells great. I mean, I love the way it smells. Some people though will tell you that it's more of a boxer dropper than a panty dropper. I don't really use those terms, either one, even though technically I just did. Panty dropper is a fragrance that women love, a compliment puller, attention grabber, you know the drill. But Aventus does seem to appeal more toward guys than girls, believe it or not. Guys smell this and they're just like, wow, that's the best thing I've ever smelled in my life. And I have gotten compliments from women, lots of women actually, wearing Creed Aventus, but it does seem to do better with guys for whatever reason. It has pineapple, it has birch, it's got vanilla, and the pineapple and the birch are what it's most well known for because if you have a batch of Aventus that's more heavy on pineapple, it's going to smell fruitier. If you have one that's more heavy on birch, it's going to smell smokier. That's a very simplistic way to break it down, but if you hear people talking about Creed Aventus batches, that's generally what they mean. Is the Aventus fruitier or is it smokier? Which one is it? Because each batch of Aventus does smell a little bit different. Honestly though, if you're starting out, if you're getting into this fresh, don't worry about the batch talk with the Ventus. It will just get too confusing, and honestly, it's not something that you should get worked up about. If you've never smelled a Ventus though, definitely do try to seek out a sample or a decant. Check this one out, that way you'll know what all the fuss is about. There are lots of people out there who are absolutely in love with the Ventus, who own 10 plus bottles of Aventus, but by that same token, there are lots of people out there who bought into the Aventus hype, bought a bottle without smelling it first, and then ended up not liking it at all. With that being the king of fragrances though, you should smell it at least once. We go from a very expensive niche fragrance to a very inexpensive designer fragrance. This is not a scent that I would expect you to wear nowadays, uh, though when it came out, it was extremely popular. It's this CK1 by Calvin Klein. This was an enormous release, and it's also unisex. So it's worn by both men, and women. Nowadays, I would say most men would say that this comes across maybe a little bit too feminine, a little bit too floral for them, maybe a little too soapy for them. But when CK1 came out, it was huge. It was everywhere, everybody was wearing it. When CK1 came out, it was everywhere, everybody was wearing it. It was super popular, big compliment puller at the time as well. Nowadays, as I said before, nobody really seems to care about CK1. But when that came out, it started to help usher in this age of masculine fragrances that are maybe not 
as typically masculine as you would have expected from some of the scents that came out in the 70s, the 80s, where you had things that were more tobacco, leather, oak moss based. This one and the fragrance that comes up right after this one, which has actually a really similar looking bottle, which may make you know what it is. They kind of work together to usher in this age of freshies and aquatics and uh, men's fragrances using white floral notes things like that. And they each have the same perfumer. So we go from CK1 to Aqua de Jo by Giorgio Armani, of course. This is a citrus white floral fragrance with some aquatic notes, uh, which you would expect because of the name Aqua de Jo. I've talked about this a number of times on this channel, and I would assume that most of you out there have smelled Aqua de Jo. But if you have not, for any reason, smelled Aqua de Jo, you definitely should. It is, after all, the number one selling men's fragrance of all time. It has spawned countless flankers at this point. If you don't know what a flanker is, it's a fragrance in the same line of fragrances as this one, the original, just with a different name and typically a different take on the DNA of the original. Though sometimes a flanker will go completely different direction. We don't need to go too heavily into that, but Aqua de Jo Profumo, for example, is the flanker of Aqua de Jo, in case you didn't know. This is my most complimented fragrance of all time, though nowadays, because it's been worn so much, it's a bit played out. Though, if you go out in public very often, you'll probably still run across somebody rocking this one. A lot of younger guys nowadays do go for the flankers of Aqua de Jo, uh, like Aqua de Jo Absolu, Aqua de Jo Profumo that I spoke about just a second ago, or even Aqua de Jo Absolu Instinct. If you haven't smelled the original Aqua de Jo though, definitely seek it out, get a sample, go to your local Sephora, your local store in the mall, whatever, your Macy's, get a sample, check it out. Next up, another classic designer fragrance. This one by Francis Kirkjohn. He was the perfumer, so automatically a lot of you know what this is. It is Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans. Lavender, vanilla, and mint are gonna be the main notes that you get from this one. And this was a huge club fragrance, a date night fragrance, and also huge compliment getter when it came out in the 90s. Pretty much everybody out there has probably seen that bottle, right? That iconic Jean-Paul Gaultier bottle of just the male torso and his package. I do like that on the new bottle, Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Beau, there's a little leaf covering his package. That's a nice touch. But back to talking about this one. It's got a good amount of sweetness. It's a fragrance that's been copied a number of times. And that is one of those fragrances that at some point you may have dated somebody. And if you're wearing Le Mal, they say, hey, you smell like my ex-boyfriend because that one was worn to death, just like Aqua de Jo. Very important fragrance though. Uh, one of the most popular designer releases of all time, especially over the past few decades. And it really helped jumpstart the career of Francis Kirkjohn, who went on to create Maison Francis Kirkjohn of Baccarat Rouge 540 fame. Up next is an extremely popular fragrance that's been very popular ever since it came out in 2008. It's a fragrance that helped set into motion the idea of this sweet date night fragrance that maybe doesn't project very heavily, but has this sensual sexiness to it that helps draw people into you, pull compliments, and might help you seal the deal on a date. So the fragrance I'm talking about, the original Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Toilette. This one features amber and tobacco. As I said, it's got a, a nice, spicy, sexy sweetness to it. Uh, it's not a great performer, which is kind of funny when we're talking about dates, I guess, but it doesn't have enormous projection. It doesn't last for 10 plus hours. To be fair though, that's not what the fragrance is going after. As I said, it has this magneticism to it that helps pull people into you. And on a date, that's what you're going for. This came out a year before La Nuit de Lome by Yves Saint Laurent, which is another huge date night fragrance, night out fragrance. And like I said, to me, Dolce & Gabbana, the one really helped push that genre of fragrance forward. And the reverberations of that are still being felt today, uh, along with the one flankers, like the one Eau de Parfum, and the less successful, the one Grey. It has helped make that a genre a fragrance that people seek out. The specific date night fragrance that you keep in your rotation for dates and 
don't wear a ton outside of situations like that. A lot of people nowadays will go with the Eau de Parfum over the Eau de Toilette, though I still love the Eau de Toilette. It's a fragrance that really captured my attention over 10 years ago when I first smelled it, and I still think it smells great today. Next up is a fragrance that a lot of you are gonna be angry with because it started the whole blue fragrance trend. It's this Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette by Chanel. A lot of people will ask me, Ashton, what is a blue fragrance? Because I do throw that out a lot, maybe too much. But to me, a blue fragrance is a fragrance that is made solely to be as versatile as possible, as mass appealing as possible, and to garner as many compliments as possible. Oftentimes they'll come in a blue bottle. Oftentimes they will have a citrus opening with ginger. And then you'll have oftentimes, I keep saying oftentimes, a little touch of incense in there, a uh, nice woodsy base and inoffensive woodsy base. And they will have uh, ambroxan or amberwood or something along those lines as well. And also it doesn't hurt if they have blue in the name and a blue bottle, that kind of helped seal the deal on this being a blue fragrance. So Blue de Chanel came out. It was widely panned by the fragrance community when it was first released. The fragrance community didn't really think too highly of it, said that it was boring, derivative, uninspired. You know the drill. And I think that's the second time I've said you know the drill in this video. I'm just like a cliche machine today. Anyway, Blue de Chanel came out, was not loved, and then over time, People bought it, people smelled it, people started wearing it, and they said, yeah, I mean, maybe it's not the most inspired thing on earth, but it works. It lasts, it gets me compliments, people love it, I can wear it anywhere, not bad. But what happened is Blue de Chanel started selling like crazy. All the other designer fragrance brands took a look at it and said, can I uh, come up with one of those? Maybe put a little twist on it? And that has led us to where we are today with your your Sauvages, your Dylan Blues, your Mr. Burberry's, your Aqua Atlantiques, and on and on. So you can thank Blue de Chanel for that, and you should definitely check this one out if you haven't. That way you can see the fragrance that kind of started the whole trend that we're currently living through. Blue de Chanel essentially set into motion what is considered now the modern man's fragrance. Next up, a Dior fragrance that is a little bit divisive, a little bit love it or hate it. For me, it is a love. Dior Fahrenheit. And I do have some vintage bottles of this as well. Not that you need to worry about that if you're a beginner, because again, that's opening up a big can of worms. It's got leather, it has violet, but the thing that most people will talk about with Dior Fahrenheit is the petrol vibe that it gives off. When I say petrol, I mean gas, gasoline. And you can smell that just from the atomizer. When you give Fahrenheit a big whiff, it does have a nice smell of gasoline. Now, some of you out there are gonna think that's weird. And I've, I've read a lot of reviews of this fragrance where people say, if I wanted to smell like gasoline, I would just dump gas on myself. Obviously, it doesn't smell exactly like gasoline. It is a fragrance after all, but it is a classic 80s masculine scent, one of the most popular fragrances from the time frame that this was released in. Great performance on this fragrance as well. Awesome night out fragrance in my opinion. Uh, like I said, very masculine type of scent with the leather and the gasoline, which is actually violet. If you've never smelled Dior Fahrenheit, you owe it to yourself, check it out. Now, I know a lot of younger guys, guys that are into newer fragrances like this one are not gonna like Fahrenheit, but for me, to love, and I think it's one that you should definitely check out at least once because it is a legend. From one Dior to another, Dior Homme Intense. This is most well known for having a lipstick kind of vibe. The iris in here gives off a makeup or lipstick kind of scent profile. To me, it is absolutely stunning. One of the best fragrances that I've ever smelled on the designer level. The performance here is great. One of the best formal fragrances that you can wear, though where Fahrenheit is very masculine, Dior Homme Intense for some people is not. The iris here can come across powdery to some people. It can come off metrosexual is how it's described sometimes. To me though, fantastic fragrance, the quality through the roof. And from the Dior Homme line, if you hadn't smelled any of them, I would say you've got to check this one out. Honestly though, you can't go wrong with pretty much any of the fragrances from the Dior Homme line. It's just that one is my, my favorite. We're wrapping this up. A few more fragrances. Technically it's supposed to be two, 
but each of these next ones I have multiples for, so my bad. Next fragrances on this list are Yves Saint Laurent, Rive Gauche, and Azaro Pour Homme. So this is one of my vintage Azaro Pour Homme bottles, and this one is one of my newer ones. So why I include two fragrances here? Because they're barbershop fragrances, which you'll hear talked about a lot. Barbershop scents, barbershop scents. What is a barbershop scent? Uh, it's kind of self-explanatory, really. If you go into a barber shop, the scent that you'll pick up, and I mean a proper barber shop, not like a uh, salon in the mall, you'll pick up uh, that smell, uh, that very particular barber shop smell, which could smell like club mint, like the aftershave, or uh, the powder, like the talk that they'll put on you. After they give you a nice straight razor shave, that's pretty similar to how a barbershop fragrance is going to come across. So Azaro Pour Homme is going to be one of the almost dropped it, one of the more affordable barbershop scents that you can pick up. This one has been out for decades. From discounters, very inexpensive. And if you can find this in a store, definitely give it a spray. See how it works on you. This one, the YSL, uh, my version here is the original like little tin can, but they re-released this into a little cube bottle, a uh, Reeve Gosh and you can check this out in either one of those. If you can find one of these original bottles, cans, then scoop it up. But if you can't, you can try it out in the, uh, the little square bottle that it was re-released in. Either way, same fragrance. For the most part, same fragrance. We're not gonna go into that, but if you can try out either one of these, definitely do so. That way you know what people are talking about when they say barbershop. Now, these aren't going to smell the same as each other or every other barbershop fragrance out there, but it will give you a good idea of what people mean when they say it smells like a barbershop scent. Last up, three fragrances, your choice. Terre d'Hermes, Grey Vetiver by Tom Ford, and Vetiver by Guerlain. Obviously, these all have one thing in common, Vetiver as a note. All three of these are classy type fragrances, gentlemanly, sophisticated, ones that you could wear to the office, ones that you could wear formally, but also casually. Vetiver is one of the most prominent notes in men's fragrances in general, often used as a base note. It can come across a bunch of different ways. It can come across grassy, it can come across earthy, dirty. A lot of different things can go into uh, vetiver fragrances, how vetiver comes across. Oftentimes in vetiver fragrances, they will even use multiple types of vetiver. For example, Nishane Sultan Vetiver, which I have back here, is uh, a fragrance that utilizes four different types of vetiver to get four different ways for that note to come across in it. What I'm saying is, vetiver is used extensively. You should know how it smells. And honestly, everybody, in my opinion, if they have a collection, should have at least one, at least one, vetiver-based fragrance. These are three of the most popular vetiver fragrances, especially for beginners. I would say the gray vetiver out of these three is probably the easiest to wear. Guerlain vetiver is the most affordable if you go through a discounter. Of course, if you want more information on these vetiver fragrances, you can look them up on a website like Fragrantica.com. This video has already run really long, so I'm gonna cut it off right there, and that's going to be my first 10 fragrances every man should smell at least once, the basics. I'll come back with another one before too long, probably still on the basic side of things, the more obvious side of things, though not quite as obvious as this list. If there are any fragrances that you think I should have included here that I did not, leave them in the comments below, but understand there's a good chance that those will be in the next iteration of this list. As always, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. I truly do appreciate it, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you, friends.